Hi, I am Lee Unkrich. I am a longtime director at Pixar Animation Studios. Just finished my new film, Coco, and I am here in Mecca. I will start with something that I have never seen that I feel very guilty about, which is the Three Colors uh, trilogy. My friend Andrew Stanton um, loves these films, and he's been trying to get me to watch them for years, and, uh, and I haven't, so I'm going to fix that now. This is one of the first films that I remember seeing when I went to film school. That was the best thing about film school for me, was having the opportunity to see so many great movies. I was actually a projectionist when I was at USC Film School, so I got to see movies all day, every day. Milos Forman, Loves of a Blonde. This is amazing. This is a simple, heartbreaking film. Very, very lovely. Well worth seeing. Not a film a lot of people know about. The Graduate, another amazing film, Mike Nichols. This is another film, you know, I, I started as an editor. When I went to film school, I ended up focusing on editing and I started my career as an editor. That's actually how I came to Pixar in the first place, was to edit the first Toy Story film. And I still edit on all of the movies that I make. So I'm, I am directing now, but my first love will always be editing. And there were a number of films that um, kind of blew my head open uh, having to do with editing and, and the power of editing. And The Graduate was one of them. Punch Drunk Love, Paul Thomas Anderson. This is, I think it's in my top five movies of all time. I'm friends with Gary Rydstrom, who is the sound designer on this. And he talked to me a lot about, um, about how Paul Thomas Anderson talked to him about this idea that there were kind of like aliens observing everything going on in the story from kind of outside the, the frame line. And um, it's nothing that's implicit in the film, but when you watch the film, there's kind of all this kind of odd stuff with lens flares creeping into the frame. And, and uh, I think he had, if I remember correctly, he had Gary do kind of sound design that was specific to that, to that notion. And again, it has nothing to do with the film, but I love hearing things like that where, where the filmmakers are, are kind of thinking about ideas and expressing um, ideas that are kind of outside the, the bounds of the of the film itself. Angel at My Table, I believe it was originally made as a TV movie in Australia, and then it ended up getting released theatrically around the world. Not many people have seen it. It's a beautiful film. This is probably the most quoted movie in my household. My wife and I saw this years ago. We love it. Um, I got to meet Jane Campion when we were releasing Finding Nemo in Australia, and uh, it's, it was maybe the most nervous I've ever been meeting a filmmaker because I just adore her so much. Um, and I remember she looked at Andrew Stanton and myself and she just said, oh, you're babies. You're just two little babies. You've made this beautiful film and you're babies. I'm not a baby anymore. Seconds, John Frankenheimer. This is an awesome film. I first saw this in film school at a screening and I think at the time that I saw it, Seconds wasn't available on video anywhere. So I saw this one screening of this amazing film, and I, for a few years, was telling everybody about it. Um, Rock Hudson. Beautiful black and white photography by, um, uh, is it James Wong Howe? Um, and a lot of really innovative camera work that you would see influences from later on. Um, Ernest Dickerson, who would shoot for uh, Spike Lee. Um, a lot of that kind of locking the camera onto the character thing that, that Spike Lee used to do um, really came from seconds. It's essentially a feature length Twilight Zone episode, but shot really, really beautifully. Uh, another one of my probably top five favorite films, All That Jazz. Bob Fosse. This is an amazing film. Also very 70s. But that's not a bad thing. Um, this was one of the first films that really showed me the power of editing. And it's amazing that Bob Fosse hadn't been a filmmaker in his career. I mean, he was a choreographer and a stage director. And to see the command that he had over filmmaking and editing and using it rhythmically the way he used dance and movement is really remarkable. This has been super, super fun. So many more movies. 
this is mostly movies that I need to see. So this is very inspiring and I look forward to spending the rest of my life watching Criterion movies. Thank you.